Hi everyone, today I'm going to make a video to show you how to draw this chessboard. And I'm going to draw it according to a size I got on the, uh, the internet. Uh, most of them vary between 25 centimeters to 33 centimeters. So I'm going to draw this one at 30 centimeters or 300 millimeters. So to start with, I'm going to draw a block that's 300 wide and 300 high and just carry over those points and then I have a board that's 300 by 300 so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to join the lines just to make it simpler or alternatively you can draw a rectangle with this function or command over here the rectangle function and just put in the dimensions of 300 by 300. So the next step is to create the inner square. Uh, as you can see here, there is a bit of distance between the side and the square inside. So I'm going to make the width of my outer, let's say square, I'm going to make it 15 millimeters. So to do that, I'm going to go into offset. I'm going to type in 15. And I'm going to offset it to the center. So the next thing to do is, is to count the amount of squares that you want. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 by 8. So to get to divide this block up into smaller blocks, 8 by 8 blocks, I have to dimension this. So this should be 270. So as you can see, it's 270. So if I go to my calculator and I type in 270 divided by 8, because I want 8 equal size boxes, it gives me 33.75. So I'm going to draw a line from there to there. And then I'm just going to move it down. I'm going to select with the blue box so I don't select the square underneath. So I'm going to move it down 33.75. So next what you can do is you can copy that line and use the top one as a reference. So you have that same distance every time. Or alternatively you can just use the offset function. So the next step is to get the horizontal lines. Or the vertical lines I'm going to copy this off to the side select all the lines rotate and rotate it 90 degrees now I can move it back to the center of the board and there you have all the squares that you need so now I'm going to draw this in 3d but before I do that I'm just gonna in a previous tutorial I drew a peon or yeah, it was a peon, and I know the bottom radius of that peon was 30 millimeters. So I'm just going to draw a circle in one of these squares just to check if that will fit into my box. So the radius is going to be 15, and as you can see, it's a close fit. So I want to make it, let's say, 10% bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the whole board. I'm going to type in SC, enter for scale, select a point to scale from. And if I want to make it 10% bigger, I have to scale it by a factor of 1.1. If I scale it to a factor of 1, it's going to stay the same size. If I scale it to a factor of 2, it's going to be twice as big. So if I scale it to 1.1, it's going to make it 10% bigger. So now I know my piece will fit on this board definitely. So the next step that I want to do is just convert this to a 3D object. So the first thing I want to do is copy these off to the side. Then I'm going to use a press pull function and press pull it by 20 millimeters. That's 2 centimeters thick. And the center I'm just going to make 10. So it's 1 centimeter thick. So I left a space for all the blocks to be um, 
for all the blocks to fit into the board. So first thing I want to do with this is I want to join these two pieces. So I go to the solid union function, I click on that, select the two objects I want to join, right click and it joins the two objects. The next thing that I want to do is I want to start well, I don't want to put in the blocks just yet. So to start with, I'm just going to round these edges and chamfer it a bit so it doesn't have these sharp edges. And you can do that by going to Solid and go to Chamfer Edge. And then you type in D to put in the distance. And my first distance was 10 millimeters. So that means 10 millimeters down it's going to start and 12 millimeters across. So I'm going to select each side that I want to chamfer, right click to see what it looks like, right click to accept. So as you can see it's still some sharp edges. So you can keep it like that if you want, but I want to fillet my edges and I'm going to keep the radius at the default of one millimeter and just select all the edges that I want to, um, to fillet over. So I'm going to keep the bottom quite sharp. So I'm just going to round the top edges as you can see here. And then to rotate your view is you hold down shift the mouse wheel and just drag to the side. And then it will rotate your view. So I just want to select everything I want to round. Right click to preview, right click to accept. So the next step is to draw the boxes or the squares that you're going to use to stand on with your pieces. And I'm going to do that with press pull. Now I left a gap of one millimeter or 10 millimeters deep. So I'm going to make these each of them 10 millimeters thick. So what you can do is you can go around and you can copy this to every square or you can you press pull every square or you can extrude every square but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the array function so I'm going to click on the array so in between the boxes I know I've said um, the gaps must be 33.75 as indicated when I did the uh, when I calculated the size of each box but I've scaled it 1 or 10%. So I know it's 10% bigger. So just to make sure what the size is, I'm going to measure one of the boxes, just one of the sides. So it's 37.125. reason it's stuck in this command usually what happens is when AutoCAD auto saves um, each of them has an auto save function built in they usually hang a bit when you try to edit text so that's what happened right there so I'm just going to delete that so 37 then I select the array again so I'm going to put in 37.125 between the rows or the columns and 37.125 between the rows. And I know I have 8 of each. So that's a much easier and faster way to draw that. And then I'm going to select it, the array and move it into place. So as you can see, it's quite difficult to make out what's happening here. So you have to explode the array with X enter. So now you have individual blocks again. So next, what you want to do is you want to select all the corresponding or the blocks that you want to make the same color. Let's say this darker brown and join them. So it would make the process of selecting them in future much easier. So I know there's going to be four in each row. So if you select something that you don't want to select, you can hold down the shift button and click on it again and it deselects that. 
It happens quite a lot when working with AutoCAD that you select something that you don't want and it's not necessary to restart the whole command. So as you can see, I'm always done selecting all of the squares that are going to be the same color. And now I can just right click to join them all. So next, instead of selecting all the other blocks, I'm going to go with a blue selection block and deselect those. And then I can solid, oh, I have to select the solid union first. So as you can see, I've selected all the others that weren't joined. And now each color is union or uh, connected to each other. So all that's left to do is select the colors for your board. And you go into PR enter to go into your properties or you can alternatively just change the property or the layer which it's on. I'm going to select this for the side color and I'm going to select that for one color for the lighter brown and select that color 34 for the other squares. So as you can see you have a good looking um, chessboard and it's quite easy to draw. It was quite a quick process and I hope this helped you and if you followed my other tutorials on how to draw the pieces I've already drawn a pawn so next I'm going to draw a castle so you can follow that as well to get a complete chest set. Thank you so much for watching I hope you saw something that you didn't know or you learned a new skill and see you next time. Bye bye.